Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video it's gonna be a bit of a different video and it has been actually the trend for the past few weeks now that it's always been a bit of a different video um, but uh, anyway I just got back from Thailand uh, I was there for three months oh sorry three weeks uh, for like personal reasons uh, mainly just for extending certain uh, official documents there and also visiting my mom there and everything. Um, so photography was not really my main priority when visiting it, uh, when visiting the country and still I would like to share the equipment that I brought there because uh, I had hoped that I wanted to take some nice pictures there but spoiler alert, I didn't really take a lot of nice photos there because uh, after everything was over, um, I myself got a really, 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 really bad fever and cold afterwards. So yeah, by the time I started recovering, I had to fly back to Europe already, but I did took some images and um, though not the type of images that I was hoping to get or to take, but at least uh, I have the equipment right here and also the very messenger bag that I took with me um, to tell you the equipment that I brought and why I brought it. Maybe it will help you to also pack your equipment. Obviously some of these are very redundant and um, that's also because uh, they have their own purposes and when traveling you should never really travel with this much unless if you really want to or if you have specific reasons why or specific image that you want to capture that requires different types of equipment, different types of camera brands, things like that. And before getting to the video, I want to say that for this video, uh, the tripod that I took to Thailand is um, being like used for the camera that's recording me, as well as the lens. My main Fuji lens that I took to Thailand is also recording me right now, which is the 16mm f1.4. And the microphone that I took to Thailand is the Video Mic Go, which is recording this audio as well. So these are the three main um, pieces, not main, but the, these are the three pieces of equipment that will not be shown in this video because it's being used to record me on my X-T2, which I didn't take to Thailand. But yeah. Anyway, I'm first gonna start, like I already put out my, my main camera equipment out here. But I'm gonna first start with my bag. This is my Tamarack uh, Rally, I think it's seven. Uh, I'm not sure, it's the biggest Rally um, messenger bag, uh, which has been dis long discontinued here in Northern Europe, sadly, because I absolutely love this bag. Um, I got this second time back in like 2014 or 2013. I made an unboxing video on it. It's such a great bag, it's replaced like, like this one was replacing the previous camera bag, which was the exact same design because that bag has been through with me from like jumping from islands to islands. I threw it on the boat, I threw it on through the rain, um, Southeast Asian typhoons and things like that and it survived everything, holding my two full frame cameras and four L lenses and my MacBook Pro and everything. It was a beast and it, uh, yeah. But over time, you know, just like anything, it starts not to like be in shape anymore but this since 2014 and now going into 2020 it is still in shape and uh, slowly falling out of pieces especially on this where it's breaking apart this um, support but everything else still functions as of now I still cannot find such a versatile bag it looks big but inside it can, can actually store more than you think it can as explained with this uh, amount of equipment. Anyway, um, obviously it's almost empty um, and in the bag I always recommend to keep uh, the um, dividers properly exactly divided to your equipment because it will help uh, to organize your equipment but also keep these uh, gels. These are very very important to keep the moisture out of your camera bag if you're traveling, especially this is not 100% waterproof and even if you have a 100% waterproof camera case, if you took your cameras out in the rain and put it back in the bag when it's still wet, there could still be chances that the uh, moisture and fungus could develop over time um, if you don't uh, carefully clean it. And this is also a really huge problem with a lot of uh, travel photographers and also t uh, photographers who always go to different locations whether if they're wedding photographers or um, event photographers and what have you so always keep this uh, type of gel in your bag that um, prevents moistures usually you can get it for free on some snacks like if you buy seaweed or 
things like that, so that helps a lot. And in the front compartment, I have a lot of cables. Mainly, I have um, my um, adapter here, like the card reader, SD, CF, what have you, and all different sorts of uh, lens caps from Fuji to Canon to Canon mirrorless. It's actually divided, there are like sub compartments in here. Here I have my mint. <laughs> always have to make sure your breath smells good and another compartment I have all of my Canon um, spare batteries uh, also my uh, Fuji spare batteries and in the lower compartment I have the adapter for my, e my EF to EFM glass because I, I don't feel like buying all of the EFM lenses so I can just adapt my EF lenses on my EFM cameras even though it will show slight like different image quality of course because you are using the resolution of the sensor magnifying into the resolution of the lens so sometimes you get better images sometimes you get worse images than your than the full frame uh, optical performance um, and so on and yeah I do have extra pens I also have this in case I want to mount a camera on top of a, a camera or like a GoPro or some sort of light or any other extensions. So this uh, hot shoe thing becomes very, very useful and always invest in good quality ones. Like don't invest in like five euros, three euros one. Always go for like the 12, the 13, the 15, 20 euros. I wouldn't go higher than 25 though because uh, uh, usually you get a really, really robust and strong at the price of around 15, 16 euros already. And yeah, I also have other chargers, cables for my um, iPhone and Android stuff and also my power bank. Um, always carry like, at least for me, I always carry the 20,000 uh, 20, uh, milliamp uh, power bank, which is not here right now, it's at my girlfriend's place because I just got here from my girlfriend's place um, and I left it there charging. Um, but yeah, I always carry it because it always helps with my mirrorless setup, like with my X-T20, where the battery runs out very, very often compared to my Canon, which the battery is actually nice and okay. But in the same time, when you're traveling, you're always using Google Maps, so your phone will always be running out of batteries really fast if you're always using Google Maps to try to find the, you know, the best corner or um, to simulate the lighting, because you can use Google Maps to simulate the lighting from different times of the day. And that's another tip I would like to give you, which is um, using Google Maps to, especially going to places where you don't know where things are, you can just look from different angle and also use the lighting um, simulation, I think that's the word, simulation, to simulate the time of how certain sunlight will look like at that location, from which angle will be the best angle to shoot from. Or if you're just traveling and need to know the best public transportation and everything, you know, you're all, well, you will always be draining your battery one way or another. So all, it's always good to have a nice big power bank. The downside is it's heavy, but it's going to be able to charge several phones and also um, your camera batteries. Anyway, usually in this compartment, I keep my umbrella and well, I always reverse it sometimes. If I have a water bottle, I would either keep it here or here. So umbrellas and um and water bottles go either ways. In here, uh, in this little flap, if I'm traveling from cities to cities, then I'm keeping my computer in here, which is my MacBook Pro 15 inch Retina. It's the 15, uh, 2015 model. Um, it's the maxed out, but I don't see the reason to upgrade yet because it's still really uh, serving me very, very well. And here, this in here, I keep all of my receipts for my cameras. Uh, equipment that I bought them in Europe so when I get back to Europe I don't really have problem with the customs because I once have that and it wasn't really uh, a pleasant experience with the police at the custom uh, at the airport and in here I keep extra like postcard designs and everything uh, such as this postcard design, it's from Rotterdam, I made it, so it's it's kind of like a business card in a way, but it's also a nice souvenir to give to other people what you do and something that you create from yourself. This is from Rotterdam and uh, at the back is my website, my name, the name of my company, things like that. So yeah, it's, it's nice. And yeah, I also have another uh, fully loaded envelope of my postcards as well to give to people 
and uh, now moving this back aside, getting into the actual camera equipment. Uh, I always carry this strap. I'm not a strap person, um, but because I have a lot of cameras, I do have straps. And this is a knockoff Peak Design strap, which I recommend if you don't use a lot of straps. In terms of uh, safety, I think Peak Design is probably better and more comfortable. But because if you're like me, who just takes off the straps right away if I'm only using one camera and will not change the lens at any time and just hold on to the camera, then you're not going to be using it often and you cannot really justify paying that much for the um, original Peak Design. Um, then this is like a three, like it's around three euros and it comes with like three of these um, straps and it's actually a really nice material, kind of the same that uh, material that seat belts are made out of. So it's also very nice and smooth. And the lock is actually very, very, very secure. Um, the only thing is because it's thin and the Peak Design version is very thick, this can feel a little bit um, hurting depending on what type of neck size you have. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is my uh, bag where I stall, like, store all of my cards and whether it's SD or CF, I really have to invest more in SD cards even though I love CF more because it's just proven to be more reliable from what I use my experience overall. And getting to the lenses, which are not mounted on my camera yet, um, this is my EFM setup, which is the 22 millimeter, well, I'm sorry, 11 to 22 millimeter uh, lens. It's such a nice wide angle lens, ultra wide angle, that fits really, really nicely in the bag because it's so compact and light. A lot of times this just goes into my really small messenger bag. Uh, without knowing that it's actually there because it's so small, this setup. And the 22mm f2 on my EOS M50, this is just another like compact size camera that just fits into a really big jeans pocket, if you have that big jeans pocket, or if you have a jacket, just um, into your jacket pocket and just sleek nicely, like fit sleek in there. So it's, it's another nice option um, setup. And ultra wide and also a 35 millimeter equivalent f2 it's also really really wide aperture for a street photography type of thing so yeah that's that my 50 millimeter ef lens that i also sometimes actually a lot of times adapt to my eos m50 as well and uh this is this lens is the 85 1.2 you might be asking why i brought it uh because it's even though it's mostly for traveling i'm not going to be taking a lot of portraits well because i'll I was actually planning to meet a lot of my friends who uh, like to actually pose in front of cameras as well, um, but it turns out I was really sick that week, so I couldn't really meet up with many people, so I didn't use this lens at the end of the day, which kind of upset me because it's such a beautiful lens, but it's also heavy to take, so it was such, such a shame that I couldn't use the lens. And this is the 24 to 70 millimeter. I have to admit that I don't really use this lens anymore nowadays, apart from having it mounted to my EOS M50 unadapted um, for video work, but I usually just bring this just in case because it has the standard focal length. But the lens that lives on my full frame camera EOS 5D Mark III um, most of the time is my 16 to 35 f4 LIS USM. This is absolute a workhorse lens. Um, I have uh, beaten up with so many jobs and yeah, it's it's still surviving and it's weather sealed and it's just such a nice sharp lens. The contrast control is also nice. It's not as big as the f2.8 version of it and it's just so much nicer to use than the 17-40mm uh, to 40 millimeter that I upgraded it from, though I miss the form factor of that lens more actually, but this is so much more reliable, so much sharper, and um, the contrast is just, just so nice on this lens that, I don't know, this lens I've been living on my 5D Mark III for a long, long time um, as the uh, native lens on here. And yes, that means my main camera that I took with me is the, my 5D Mark III. That being said, I haven't used it that much. Only sometimes when I'm... Actually, only once. No, twice when I traveled. No, actually, sorry. I used it three times in general, uh, in total. Because one, a hotel staff pretty much asked me to take photos of uh, some of their rooms because they saw that I was a photographer. Um, <laughs> In exchange, uh, she actually gave me some drinks and um, 
extra time to check out, things like that. Um, and also called a cab for me when I was leaving. So yeah, but um, it was in a really rural place, so they couldn't really pay me and I was more than happy to take some of the photos for them anyway. Um, but anyway, yeah, that, that was the main... Oh, and the second event was uh, f traveling to different temples with my friend and the third time was just traveling to another temple with my mom and I thought I could get some really nice shots with my 5D Mark III, but turns out um, it was too much tourist for me to actually use it. And in that case, I actually ended up using my X-T1 more often to take those pictures of the temple. Uh, but with my X-T1, I most of the time, actually, yeah, most of the time, I have it mounted with my 16mm f1.4. Such a brilliant lens, so sharp, so nice to focus with, so nice to take pictures with, and the manual, like the man mechanical, um, aperture dial is just so nice to work and it's such a nice build quality, not too big, but also very, very, very sharp lens to have. Um, that being said, this 16 to 50 millimeter lens is also such a nice kit lens from Fuji because it is so sharp. I cannot think of other kit lens in this price range that is consistently as sharp throughout the range as this lens. The only downside of this lens is the flaring is not like the flaring is not too much but in the same time when there's flare the color of the flare is not so nice as um, let's say the Canon kit lenses but it is sharper than the Canon mirrorless kit lens the 15 to 45 from Canon. This is definitely sharper than that but that lens is still much smaller than this so this one has room to actually improve on the optical quality. Um, this is my last EF lens that I took with me to Thailand. Um, it's the macro lens. I took this just in case. Though it is big, but it is very light. That's why I didn't really mind taking it. And when I took it with me, brought it from here to Thailand, I actually put this in my luggage, not in my camera bag, because it was just, just one of those just in case lens I might need it. That's why I brought this. Um, and my camera that I take, my other Fuji camera that I took with me is my X-T20. This is such such a small, nice and versatile camera. This lens I actually bought in Thailand secondhand for 10,000 baht. It's roughly 300 euros. Nowadays, the last time I went to Thailand, like before last time, I mean, it, it's been so long. I'm Thai, by the way. I'm half Thai, half German. Um, but like the last time when I went there, uh, it was still like... You know, 10,000 baht would be roughly 200 euros, and this time when I went there, it was already 300 euros. So, if the Thai baht was weaker, I would have gotten this lens for a cheaper price. But I'm glad that the Thai baht was also very strong because that meant um, the money that I earned in Thailand uh, transferred to my euro account was much higher. And I hope it continues to be that way because I'm still earning some Thai baht money. So to transfer it to my euro account for my study tuition fee, it's also very necessary to have, you know, as much as possible for that reserved. And uh, anyway, regarding the way of shooting, yeah, this one was more of like being there on a planned shot. So with my Canon and Fuji system, I know earlier in the year I was... Um, trying to find out whether I'm switching over to Fuji or not because my girlfriend is using Fuji, she is a Fuji shooter and her pictures are amazing, like, um, don't even compare my pictures to her, like, mine is just, I don't know, <laughs> and hers is just very artistic and it's really, really nice, and, uh, but anyway, because we travel a lot together and she's a Fuji user and, it would be nice if I would uh, have Fuji system that I could use with hers and we can just share lenses and share batteries and other accessories that we might have together for Fuji so we wouldn't have to be carry carrying a lot of camera equipment. Um, but yeah, that, that was just the logic. And earlier in the year I did kind of like leave it uh, as in one of the videos saying like, I'm not sure if I'll be switching over. But in this video, I can confirm that I'm not switching over. It's going to be my backup system and my other system to work with, especially my X-T2 is such a brilliant camera. But there are cases and events that I really am more comfortable using my 5D Mark III, my other Canon DSLR, full frame DSLRs to work. And uh, from the raw files, it's easier to work with and everything. But if I'm only shooting for uh, street photography, travel photography, and stuff for like 
some stuff for social media, um, things like that. Then my Fuji system, JPEG, looks better and edited because with my Canon I might have to tweak and uh, yeah. So yeah, so I'm just keeping both system and one is best for another and this is best for another. Uh, I'm not looking to switch or to look into other brands right now. I know I'm also a Nikon shooter, but um, I'm only using my Nikon system as of now for the educational purposes of my educational part of this channel and also um, on my photography book, things like that, so I can uh, show it from a different brand or study or give tips if someone is using Nikon as well, because a lot of people are also using Nikon. And I started photography with Nikon actually, and um, yeah, that has been a bit of my gear. And uh, but in terms of the way I shoot when I was in Thailand, I mainly just have my 16mm, which is an equivalent of 24mm, uh, full frame equivalent, on my X-T1 and then that would just be my daily driver because it's such a nice lens, such a nice sharp lens, it is not too wide and it tells enough story. And um, right when I know that I, I was sick and wouldn't have time to take uh, a lot of pictures that I wanted to take, uh, I just used that lens to train myself into street photography because I've always been kind of intimidated with photography, with street photography in particular, because um, I'm usually a person who likes to photograph city, like at night, photograph landscape, things like that. Um, but when it comes to like street photography, when I have to get there on the field, when there are a lot of people, it just puts me in a really uncomfortable place. So that lens with this camera was using, like, was treating me, or I was forcing myself rather to. Um, take pictures in a different way and I did came back with a like with many different pictures that I usually wouldn't take with a 24 millimeter equivalent lens that I would otherwise just use my 16 millimeter on a full frame lens to capture so yeah that has been such a huge experience but also has been has opened my mind to take a lot of different types of pictures where a lot of people were in the frame or some people were in the shot because usually with my DSLRs I'm a person who doesn't like to photograph um, or get into other people's personal space unless if um, they're my model or they're my client or it's in the event that I'm photographing or I deliberately really want to photograph that person then I really want to get into that person's life um, well, personal space, but in public space is usually I want to avoid but in the same time I this time I, I try to capture a lot and um, I find that this setup the Fuji with a 16 millimeter really allowed me to get in there again These are just equipments. Um, you don't need to build like emotional tie to your equipment, but um, It's also nice to have an equipment that makes you enjoy certain type of uh, shoot a uh, certain way of shooting actually so yeah that because that will always open up new doors to different types of perspective and different unique um, perspective that you might have not noticed before when shooting with other main camera equipment or setup that you have uh, things like that so at the end of the day um, most of my images were from this camera with that lens 16 millimeter setup and yeah but i will be going to thailand again in april and hopefully i will not be catching any uh flu or any sickness or whatever and i would have um, enough emotion and nothing bad will happen uh and i will just have time to really take good pictures there uh and focus on the shots that i want to take and also focus on other things that um i didn't know that i wanted to take and just explore um, because last time I was just really 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 sick and couldn't really think a lot and couldn't really stay outside for such a long time either But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you get something from this video Oh, by the way in the bag there was also the lens pen for cleaning and also in Thailand I bought the uh, dust blower, but I left it there because um, So I wouldn't have to bring my dust blower to Thailand uh, the next time I go there 
um, just to just like a little cleaning kit that I leave in my bag. Yeah, that's about it. If you need a free photography free photography guidebook for absolute beginner, it's on my website or it's down in the description below. It's absolute for free. You don't need, you don't need to register. You don't need to give me your email address. I will not bombard you with newsletters. Don't worry, it's absolutely for free. I just want to help as much as possible as I can in the photography um, community to take more pictures, to document more stories, to document more events, more things that's happening because I find that photography is such a nice field, a nice way to express uh, stories or express certain things or to tell certain stories or what have you, things like that. And yeah, I realize this video has been a little bit too long, um, so I'm just gonna leave it here. Thank you very much for watching and have fun shooting. Bye.